Hello again. Um, it's been a while since I painted, so this could be an absolute disaster, but uh, I have uh, done a little bit more since the face in the sessions with the guys from Models for Heroes. And um, what we did live in the session was I was I painted the M43 combat jacket or jacket and uh, and subsequently because I hadn't got around to doing the trousers which was the plan uh, I ended up in a, another session painting the helmet and the shirt so you can see oh, You can see that the helmet has uh, a lighter top, but it's a darker green, which was basically just a, a an olive drab colour made from black and a dark green colour from AK. Uh, and then there are the two straps, uh, which are um, because the M1 combat helmet from uh, the US Army was made of a, a liner and uh, I think it was a fiberglass liner and a steel outer. The liner uh, would have been held on by a leather strap when it was worn on its own and the uh, steel pot itself, the steel helmet itself, would be held on by a canvas strap. Now they're often just hooked up over the helmet rim so that the uh, helmet, the steel helmet strap at the back and the uh, red leather strap at the front for the liner. I also painted the shirt in, uh, I think it was English uniform from, which is a nicely matches the kind of a slightly brownish tone of wool clothing of the US Army. But I'm not going on at the moment about the M43 uh, tunic top because that's what we're going to paint now on his trousers. That's the plan. Um, so, uh, so what I am using, let's go through this. I am using uh, some, uh, I'm using uh, approximate colour guides from uh, something Calvin Tan uh, posted. So I'm using um, dark green from AK and Green uniform base from AK, that's the number. Um, I'm going to highlight it. He recommends in his using this light green. When I started doing that on the top, I found it a little bit luminous, a little bit too bright. So uh, I'm a big fan of using. Um, khaki from model colour but I'm trying to paint as much of this as possible in AK Gen 3 colours and when you look at the colour table you know, colour matching tables apparently this canvas tone matches uh, khaki from but I'm not convinced myself they don't look that similar um, so I'm going to be on the lookout for something similar um, and I like to use khaki to uh, uh, desaturate the colour a little bit and also add some continuity between items of uniform. Uh, uh, but I'm going to also use a bit of deck tan to effectively lighten the canvas tone and green for the highlights. Which is that, that's the dark green and the uniform base and the three highlight colours. 
I'm also planning on using a little bit of brown to add some early dirt and grime on his trousers and see how that looks. And this is nothing more, and I'm, I'm oh yeah, I'm learning quite a bit about using um, uh, brain dead. Um, using the AK paints, they're quite still quite new for me. Um, but I'm going to mix some dark, probably 50 50 of a dark green and um, green uniform base as a starting point, thin it slightly. Um, just a word about that. You may have seen this as another thing I've stolen from Calvin Tan. Uh, he often uses some card. I'm using some black. This is just from an A4 sheet of paper, uh, black card. And uh, from an art shop. And I've cut it into six pieces. And I tend to, I, I use this to check the... Um, uh, thickness of my paint so it becomes very useful for seeing how uh, how much how thin the paint is translucency etc etc so um, that will come in useful later on so what I'm just going to do is I've got my paint mixed there and all I'm going to do is start with a number one brush, start painting it over the figure. It's going to be slightly different in tone potentially than his uh, uh, his jacket. Never going to get that match when I haven't painted for three weeks. Uh, but one thing I'm learning is the uh, AK paint uh, covers quite nicely, dries pretty quickly. Um, just going to zoom out slightly, see if I can keep this one in the right place. So it's not, I'm not covering it, not slapping it on, but uh, a larger brush means I can cover quite quickly, and I am. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> Zach. Hello, how you doing? That's uh, my nephew. If he's watching this, what's happening is is my. I've got goggles on. I've got magnifying things on my head, and whenever. I get too close to the phone, which I'm recording this on, I hit it with them and it kind of makes it wobble. So yeah, that's why it keeps wobbling, mate. That's why it keeps wobbling, but there you go. So for everyone, I apologize for the wobbling chaos of this video. I'm an amateur. But if I keep doing this enough, I'll eventually get used to not having it crash into the camera. Anyway, I'm probably just going to shut up for a minute or two while I cover this. And I'll probably hit the two times speed button and put some music on. Maybe I won't. Anyway. Let's get this done. Let's get this done.
So you can see how quick that's drying, really. And it's getting quite matte very quickly. Um, I always have an issue of missing bits. So, take your time. Turn it. Look at it from the bottom and see if there's any angles you've missed it at. Um, you're bound to miss stuff, I often do miss bits and pieces. Quite weird, just for your information, I'm now using the camera to paint Ooh. and not looking around the camera. Actually, spotting those black bits of the primer that are still showing through. You can see how impressively this uh, uh, AK paint is drying, how quickly it is. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Ooh, look at the state of my brush. Okay, so. key thing we're after here is just a consistently clean and uh, even coat of paint at this stage. It's neither too thick or too thin. And I think that's one of the good things about this AK paint seems to be the coverage is pretty reasonable. I mean, that's going to need another coat. Um, but given that's one pass, that's looking pretty decent. So I'm going to mix up a bit more. Maybe even... This has got to be about 50-50 water to paint. Like I'm not going to pretend that I do it perfectly. Uh, I'd also recommend that you wait for the paint to dry before adding another coat. A uh, hairdryer can be handy to speed that up. Um, but let's go on the second one. And First thing is always to get a nice, clean, consistent base coat in the right place. That's it. Because you can leave it at that point. You can do no more and you will be happy with it. What we're intending to do is to take it a little bit further and add some shadows and highlights just to make the figure and the trousers a little bit more interesting than uh, what they are, but you're not obliged to do that at all. But things that it's so easy to take for granted, i.e. how to get a nice clean coat of paint on, uh, Sometimes it's just worthwhile seeing somebody do it. You can see how quickly this has gone on for this second coat. Now I'm not battling against uh, the black primer. And 
it's starting to dry already. Looking good. Be back in a second. As the trousers pretty much dry. What I'm going to do now is just do a very simple bit of uh, um, doing some early primary grime and dirt. Was one way to do it, kind of thing. Now you can use all sorts of colours for dirt. Um, probably will at some point in the making of this figure. But I've got some um, oh, earth brown, which seems kind of appropriate. Um, which I've thinned a lot, uh, quite a bit. And all I'm going to do is kind of just around. Oh, where was I? the lower leg and knees uh, so this is almost like a uh, I'm doing a stippling uh, motion So the idea is it will just become effectively part of my base coat. Um, one thing to do and consider when you're, uh, I mean this is really thin, you can see on the camera that is thin. Um, you don't at this point even want it to necessarily be perceptible. And I will probably end up uh, well, I'm planning on going back over it again with some more of the base colour so you can see I'm just properly stippling that it will dry darker than what it's looking there and you can, I wouldn't say do it randomly, but you can do it logically. Um, interesting thing, whether you've noticed or not, if you go outside and bend over, bend down and kneel in some mud and then stand up, you'll probably notice that your knees don't actually have much mud on them. They're below because when you bend, that's kind of where the mud because uh, of the way your knees bend and so uh, having them in the lower extremity of the trouser probably work better or would be more realistic uh, another thing is when you're walking through mud uh, you tend to get some caked on the inner lower part of the leg from when you're walking so little bit stippled in that as well uh, and again yeah you can put a few random bits as well this is where it's ever so slightly like uh, 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 painting or weathering a tank or an AFE of some description these paints are very nice for that actually and you'll see where it's drying we're just getting the hint of dirt there we've not got a lot going on it's up it's higher on the leg um so for yeah it just kind of illustrates a hint of the dirt that's built built up. 
and we want that to end up being kind of vanishing slightly in the shadows and the highlights will do but they're going to be thin passes of paint but yeah think about the guy where he's been what he might do where he might kneel where he might uh, lean against things you know, a little bit where he might sit down so he's going to get some on his bum uh, on the back of his leg but it's not going to be everywhere. He might wipe his hand. He might have got his hands muddy. And he might wipe those on his higher up his leg. It's a little thoughts like that as to how things might get muddy and dirty in a particular way. So, you know, when we look at him, he still looks like he's uh, wearing green trousers, but there's some mud in it. Uh, so that's a starting point. I'm going back to my green. Now I'm going to thin that down quite a bit more. So my base coat thinned a lot. So I'm going to do a kind of a filter. I'm not going to call it a wash uh, over top of the dirt I've added in places, but not everywhere. The idea being to uh, just make it part of the fabric of his trouser. There we go. Pause that again. End of part two. Right, part three. Hopefully we can see now that there is a bit of dirt and grime, very subtle at this point in time. We might add some wetter stuff later on, uh, but the goal of that was just to alter the green just enough to imply a bit of grime and dirt. Now we're going to try and do some highlights uh, and uh, for that I have got something that slightly too much. Um, I've got the green base uh, which is I've thinned down quite a bit. I'm adding more of the forest, not the forest green, the uh, uniform base, green uniform base. I'm going to add a fraction of um, the light green, some, uh, I would call it khaki, but canvas tone, and a bit of the uh, deck tan. I don't want it to be too drastically light compared to what it was, uh, but I can use my bit of card. Uh, I've gone down a brush size to a zero. Um, it's not too uh, thick. And now I will... The idea being is that I'm always looking when doing this, and you can see it on the top on his jacket, looking at the light source as if it's hitting the upper portions of the uh, creases. Uh, uh, let's see how I can do this without banging the uh, so yeah. So just these 3D scanned models uh, have some really quite different creases to what you might see in a hand sculpted uh, figure. 
with this first pass of highlights uh, you can uh, be pretty generous I think in, in terms of where you place them You'd, this is almost uh, you might see people describing this kind of thing as sketching you're, you're just sketching the highlights in you're, you're not going for finesse you're not going for amazing blending you're just getting the color or the highlights in the places you want them for a, a, a figure like this if you think about a light source coming from uh, Shep Payne legend uh, always described a 60 degree halo of light so if you if you uh, think about this guy highlights are going to come down from anyone unless you're doing a, a single directional source uh, light will hit the back of his leg the higher portion of the back of his leg uh, even, you know, in a broad sense not necessarily just in a top edge of a crease uh, and because the paint is relatively thin uh, the highlights yeah, if you look at the highlight on the left leg compared to the right leg, the right leg has got those highlights visible because of the desk lamp, but the one side on the left, um, you can see I, I've picked out those highlights with the brush. So um, they have a different character and, and that's, Character and luminosity, I don't know, that sounds a bit pretentious, but uh, that's what you'll see when you take it away from the lamp, uh, when that light isn't any, on it anymore. And uh, you can see with this, uh, uh, creases from the 3D scanning, that there are some really sharp creases that get almost vertical light hitting it like this big one on the lower portion of his trouser leg um, uh, a very useful thing to remember is uh, when you put your brush on the figure I don't want to leave too much paint near his knee which is also where we've got some of the brown start of the dirt so i'm going to put start the brush um, the brush will touch the figure where i want least paint and it will come off at the end of where i want more paint to to land on it so i'm gonna i'll do that when so i've removed the brush there and that leaves a little bit more paint when i lift the brush from the figure um,
is an initial rough. Um, I can zoom right in and you'll basically you'll basically see that it's not pretty as it were it's not super smoothly blended that's not the intention the intention is to get some highlights it's a 135 scale figure remember that's my finger next to it so um we're not de dealing with a, a large physical area. Um, to illustrate how that can be, you can soften some of those edges if you wish, but that's not really the intention at this point. You can take some of the base color and really thin it. Uh, let's see. I mean, that's barely perceptible paint on the brush. That's very, um, I'm doing this through the camera, so, and it's a bit rough, but I'm just kind of adding that thin paint just to the boundary between my base coat, which is, what I've now got a thinner version of and I'm just using it to uh, soften that edge with what's effectively a very thin filter. I'm not going to go and do that, a load of that. <laughs> um, but you can soften where things can be quite harsh by doing that. It might take a few applications, but that is one way of uh, creating those uh, smoother transitions between light and dark. My paint I might be a little bit too thin, but that's the principle behind it. Uh, but still, for one thirty-first scale figure, oh, I think that's probably, that doesn't look too bad. Uh, now I'm going to add just a little bit more uh, of that canvas tone and deck tan. Uh, I'm trying to keep it away from going that quite vibrant green, which you can see elements of that in the top, which has its good bits about it. I'm going to go, because I'm going to a higher highlight, uh, which will take up less space. I am using a smaller brush again, so I'm using a double zero. For this in this case, so now rather than go and do all those uh, physical high, uh, parts that have caught the, you know, the, the highlights, I'm just going to go and select uh, some of the extremes of those, and I've used, the paint is now a little bit thinner. And I'm just going on to the extreme uh, points of light, as it were, the bits that are going to capture the most light catching it. I think one thing with these AK paints, Gen 3s, is that they can look quite daunting when you first apply the paint, but they dry darker mostly than what you've applied them to the, to the figure. 
if you are using the Gen 3s, don't be scared of them. There we go, for the sake of this video, um, I'm not going to go too crazy, but it illustrates how I look at it from that angle, there's a lot of little points of light catching the outside of his leg, um, as this crazy crease going all the way down. Now, I'm of the opinion these figures look great, but the conversion potential is uh, tricky. I'm not going to say it's impossible, but it's tricky because of some of these uh, 3D scanned uh, creases, this massive crease in the front of the leg. You couldn't easily turn that leg. You'd have to carve that all off to turn it into a creased leg of some description. This is a little bit of a teaser. Uh, I have another version of this guy on the go. Those of you who know your um, World War II stuff might recognise that he is not your regular infantryman. Um, I've done a few things to him. There might well be a painting tutorial. But uh, I've sculpted a few little bits and made him... Uh, a little bit bulkier in places and his M43 tunic a little bit looking as if his pockets were a bit fuller uh, but essentially he's the same guy just a little bit different with an alpine head but that's another story um, but you, you can do changes to them but it's not as straightforward but yeah you can see that little bit of grime and dirt that we'll put in at the beginning before doing anything else so next off and i nearly forgot about that we're going to add a bit of shadow i'm going to go back to my slightly bigger brush i'm going to use some of the uh, dark green and i'm going to introduce some uh, brown black uh, which I forgot to put on the palette. So that's now on the palette. It's more of a black than it's a brown. So initially I'm just going to do some... I don't want to lose the hint of the... Uh, uh, what do we call it? The uh, uniform green base. Because that gives it its distinct tone. So I still want some of that in that shadow. But this is now... A darker green. Actually, I might just add a, a hint of a brown black in there. Again, it's thin and now we're looking at putting this on. You, know, you could you can easily just turn the figure and look upwards where you want that paint to go. So uh gonna want some around the base of his boots or where his boots are tucked into his trousers trousers tucked into his boots even one of those things you know what i mean um 
you don't you know there's a mixture of depth of creases in these uh you want more i always think you want a little bit more shadow in areas behind the uh knees and in the crotch area and pl places that will naturally uh generate more motion uh, more creases and motion where the legs are bent there's the natural shadow in the crotch area uh, You can see there's not exactly been um, uh, super smooth with these, but it's just a, so much of this is uh, putting the paint in an area that's going to have an effect where you want those shadows to be, which will help accentuate the. Uh, form and shape of a 3D figure. Yes, he's already 3D. Yes, light is going to hit it, but you're not always going to be looking at that figure in a single, permanently single place of light, you know, that always has the light you want falling on it. You move it, you show it to someone somewhere else, it's going to change. So you want to create that effect that there is light, you know, light hitting it wherever it goes, wherever you take it, be it to show someone else, take it to a model show, uh, So nifty, I've added a little bit of thin, I'm going to a smaller brush and there's some areas of uh, nice little creases, it's nice to capture. Um, what you can also do is if you think about this guy when he sits down you're going to get that area, you probably see it on your own trousers, that you'll get some creasing, smaller creases where it really uh, bunches up when you're sitting down. So you can even just do a hint of those by uh, sketching those shadow areas in, you can see there's kind of light version. I've got a little bit too much paint on my brush still. Um, A black brown in to make a darker shadow, and now I'm just going to add that thinned again into just those very tightest areas of shadow. Some of those are dictated to by the sculpting, some by physically where they are on the figure. You want that kind of the bottom of his trousers create a lot of areas of shadow and putting that darker tone under in those areas will help a lot.
I'm being very conscious of uh, not boring the socks off you. You can see this has now gone on for 27 odd minutes. Just this bit. Um, I will do some more painting of this, uh, not on camera to finish it off, but I'm hopefully illustrating the principles of uh, what I've done. Although it's the same trousers and top from the same uniform, uh, they are slightly different tones of green as makes it just a little bit more interesting than a uniform as if he was sprayed uniformly it adds just a little bit of character difference. Uh, hopefully you can see that that little bit of dirt we added isn't obvious but it's just grimy it's already there um, and I haven't really done a lot of highlights and stuff I haven't really taken it to any level of finesse but uh, hopefully you can see what I've done and how it looks and it's given it given it a good bit of character I'll refine that a little bit more I'm just going to do one last thing to again illustrate what you can do I'm going to make a even darker shadow tone and for this uh, you'll be able to see it on the top you can see I've done some little lining uh, just to accentuate uh, the collar around the uh, pockets. Uh, now these trousers will have a uh, stitch on the outside and it can be quite effective to uh, hint at that even though it's not there so I'm going to do that uh, just to illustrate what you can do hopefully idea is not to do it using incredible black so you so it jumps out at you it's doing it in such a way as to create the impression of a trouser seam line. And quite bloody hard to do around all those creases. And I'm not even going to attempt to do one. So you can see that, or, or I'm not going to attempt to do one on the inside. Um, and you can do that once with a light or a dark seam. And you'll often see that you can end up with a um now gonna use the light colour to uh, terrible brush. I don't need to swap my brushes out. I'm gonna thin it even more. This is something 
you don't have to do. It can just add a little bit more interest. Um, to the figure. Like that. So I'm going to go off, I'm going to do a little bit more sharpening, uh, sharpening and softening, which is a bit of a contradiction of terms, but, uh, but yes, that's uh, effectively uh, what I did to the tunic, and uh, pretty much the same colours, I probably used a little bit more of the light green and the highlights in the at the top in, uh, in his uh, jacket compared to his trousers but uh let me just move up okay, camera start to have a wobble a little bit there uh, yeah so there he is um, progress so far chisel do 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 do, do, do. Ooh, there you go. So summary, I'd probably say, uh, oh God, I'm going to sound like Duncan Road. Uh, two or three thinner coats is better than one thick one. Um, if you get that good solid base on it, then you can work all these other effects into it. Um, you can see the you know, the perception of that dirt because it's already in. You know, we can add more dirt on top later on, but it's already got an element of grime in those trousers. But that's really thin. It's a very kind of AFV uh, tank modelling kind of technique, putting that in those layers. We could have put an, another way of doing that. We could have put the paint on uh, uh, while it was still wet, stick in some of that dirt colour many ways to do it. Anyway, time to shut up. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.